Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be answering more of your skincare questions. You all really seem to enjoy this type of video where I just casually answer some random skincare questions that I get frequently over on my Instagram, as well as in the comments of different YouTube videos. I I heard a crash outside. I just made myself some of my sun goddess matcha tea. And is this mug not the prettiest thing you have ever seen? A viewer made this for me and I adore it. It's perfect for tea. It's got a nice weighty handle on it. Speaking of tea and sun goddess matcha, today's video is sponsored by Peak Tea, my favorite brand of teas. You guys know I've been drinking their teas for years now and I keep going back to them time and time again because the quality cannot be beat. They have a ton of amazing delicious flavors. They use this cutting edge cold extraction technique to ensure the highest concentration of antioxidants in the teas and it generates these crystals that quickly dissolve in either hot or cold water so you can have a tea very easily on the go. I love that. Peak Tea has won tons and tons of awards at like the Global Tea Championship. They have a ton of five-star reviews, well-deserved because their teas are seriously amazing. And they triple screen all of their teas for any contaminants like heavy metals, pesticides, toxic mold. I'm currently sipping on their bestseller, the Sun Goddess Matcha. It is the best matcha green tea, 100% organic ceremonial grade matcha. And they actually quadruple screen to ensure purity of the matcha. Very smooth, full of antioxidants and L-theanine, which kind of has a calming effect. So yes, you get caffeine in this tea from the green tea, but the L-theanine component kind of has a calming effect so you don't get jittery. Electric turmeric is another favorite of mine, and I love having it this time of year as a turmeric latte in particular. Just the vibrant color, it's very autumnal looking, and it tastes delicious. Turmeric has curcumins, which are anti-inflammatory. And this particular tea is unique in that they use uh, Okinawan turmeric, which is fermented, to allow for maximal bioavailability. The tea also has cinnamon and ginger root added. The Hibiscus Beauty Elixir is another favorite. I love to have that one cold in particular. It's packed with vitamin C, which is helpful for building healthy collagen and giving radiant skin, and it just tastes delicious. Their Ginger Digestion Elixir, Amazing after a meal for good digestion. Ginger has gingerol, which is anti-inflammatory. Definitely check out the mint herbal tea. It's got spearmint in it to freshen up your breath. And spearmint, oddly enough, has been shown to potentially be helpful for hormonal acne. I do have a video all about this, so check that out. They have a tea for everyone. They've got a really good Earl Grey. Their black teas are amazing. They've got a cinnamon tea that, ooh, really good. Speaking of cinnamon, I'm looking forward to the holidays. And these make great gifts. Right now, you guys, Peak Tea has an exclusive offer where you can get two boxes of their best-selling Sun Goddess Matcha, plus a little beaker, which is really cute and handy for dissolving the tea and you get two free gifts. So it's a really good bundle. And if you use my code, you can get 5% off. The packaging is perfect for stuffing in a stocking too. If you're thinking about gifts, it's never too early to get ahead of holiday shopping. Anyways, head on over to peaktea.com slash Dr. Dre, use code Dr. Dre, and you get 5% off site-wide. This first question is a really good one. I've talked about the importance before of wearing sunglasses to protect not only the skin around your eyes from the damaging UV rays, but also to protect your vision and your eye health. But someone asked, how long does the UV protection on sunglasses last? I thought that was a really good question. When it comes to buying sunglasses, always make sure that the sunglasses say, 100% UV protection or UV 400. Most do, to be honest, but it doesn't last forever. That UV protection, it can and does uh, wear out after a while. How long? Well, honestly, it depends on how frequently you wear your sunglasses and kind of how rough you are with them. For example, if you take your sunglasses and throw them in your bag, they're more likely to get dinged and chipped and the lenses scratched, and that can wear away at the UV protection of the lenses. Say for example, you wear sunglasses for about two hours a day, just a rough estimate, then you're gonna wanna replace your sunglasses every two years. But if you work outdoors and you wear sunglasses all day, then you're gonna replace them more frequently. One thing I wanna emphasize to you guys though when it comes to sunglasses, don't feel as though you have to drop big bucks. The only reason to spend a lot of money on sunglasses and to buy expensive sunglasses is because you like the way that they look and then you know, you're gonna be more inclined to wear them. But as far as the ability of the sunglasses to protect your eyes, 
you know, you don't need to buy expensive sunglasses so long as it says 100% UV protection or UV 400. I mean, you can get that kind of sunglass, those kinds of sunglasses often in the gas station. The frames also offer some protection against rays that come in from the side. So, you know, bigger frames better and frames that wrap around. I highly suggest if you're gonna be outside uh, doing like water sports, golf, anything that where you're outside doing outdoor activity, then I definitely suggest those wraparound frames just to give a little bit of protection from UV rays coming in from the side. All right, number two, can you give some tips for hives? Hives are referred to as urticaria, that's a medical term for hives miserable to deal with and honestly there are so many potential types of hives out there you would your mind would be blown you can get hives some people develop hives upon exposure to water some people get hives on exposure to ice cold urticaria other people with exercise cholinergic urticaria um, but many people just develop hives randomly it can be triggered by a cold, a flu, an infection, being sick. A lot of medications can trigger hives, most commonly aspirin. Certain underlying medical conditions may be associated with bouts of hives. A lot of autoimmune conditions like vitiligo, there is a comorbid association with dealing with hives. Certain dyes in food can trigger hives, red dye in particular. If you're dealing with hives, here's what you need to know. There are certain things that will worsen them, make them come out. Heat is notorious for making the hives come out. Rubbing the skin in particular will make more hives come out of the skin. Try and bathe in cool to lukewarm water rather than hot water. When you get out of the shower, don't rub your skin with a towel because that can often elicit more hives. And this sounds silly, but it really can help. When you're getting dressed, don't get dressed in a hurry and tug your clothing onto your skin. That is a, that is a common reason to erupt in, in hives if you're already dealing with them. So be really like gentle with putting your clothing on. Scratching the skin will also bring out more hives. So when you feel itchy and you're coping with hives, get yourself some cool compresses and apply them to the skin to alleviate that itch sensation and help calm down the hives. In most cases, the hives will go away within six weeks, just spontaneously but in other cases, they last longer than six weeks. And once they last longer than six weeks, then that is called chronic urticaria. And chronic urticaria does require medical attention in terms of working it up. So your doctor should do a physical exam and there should be blood work to rule out an underlying medical cause. Honestly, in most cases, we still don't find a cause and then the patient is left with dealing with them for a prolonged period of time. How long at that point? 30 to 50% of cases of chronic urticaria will spontaneously remit within three years. 40 to 70% will spontaneously remit within five years. How do we manage it uh, medically? Antihistamines. Um, max doses of non-sedating antihistamines to control the bout of hives. And you have to take them daily, not just when you break out in hives. And in some cases, it can be to a point where somebody has to go on the medication omalizumab. It is a newer medication. I mean, it's been around for a while, but it is a newer medication. And that is another thing that, that really can end up helping a lot for people with chronic urticaria. I have a video on hives, by the way, which I'll link down below in the description box. So definitely check that out. I go into more detail than I can in this video. Um, so check that out. Tips for dry, cracked corners of the mouth. Yes, this is called angular chelitis. The corners of our mouth are a setup for irritation, and that is referred to as angular chelitis. Why? Well, saliva pools there. It breaks down the moisture barrier, and then things that you maybe ingest, or put around your mouth, kind of collect in the corners of your mouth and lead to even more irritation. Plus, it's moist. I know people hate that word. And this can lead to breakdown of that moisture barrier exclusively there and you get painful red cracking of the corners of the mouth. There are a variety of things that cause this. If you happen to wear dentures, poorly fitted dentures will result in more drooling and pooling of saliva in those areas. People who breathe through their mouth will have more saliva collect in those areas. If you sleep on your stomach and end up drooling in your sleep, of course that's gonna cause angular chelitis. And gum or certain candies that you may be sucking on all the time because they end up causing you to deposit more saliva around the mouth, that 
can really aggravate this. Certain vitamin deficiencies like B vitamins, B1, B12, B3 can cause angular culitis. What can you do about it though? Address these lifestyle factors that I've talked about. So if you sleep on your stomach, try and train yourself to sleep on your back so you're not drooling in your sleep. If you wear dentures, make sure they fit properly. Just try and stop chewing gum all the time. But in addition to addressing the lifestyle factors, make sure that you use either Vaseline or like CeraVe healing ointment to the corners of the mouth. Don't use like a lip gloss, a lot of lip balms and lip glosses. More often than not, they're not gonna be adequate for this condition because they'll have flavorants, um, or they're simply not formulated to be occlusive enough to act as a skin protectant there and really help facilitate healing. So you're gonna wanna use like Vaseline, Aquaphor, CeraVe healing ointment to those areas and just keep putting it on nonstop while simultaneously addressing these lifestyle habits and it can help with healing. I have a video on angular culitis. I'm also gonna look down, look down below, <laughs> speaking of mouth. I have a video on angular culitis. I'm also gonna link down below for you guys if you're dealing with this. I know it's miserable. Can I use olive oil post-shave? I thought this was an interesting question. I'm assuming you mean like as a moisturizer. Of course, with my videos, you know it's never a black and white yes, no answer. <laughs> olive oil is an emollient. It's gonna help soften skin cell edges. It's packed with antioxidants. I mean, JLo uses it, so. Um, it must it must work, right? Olive oil, oddly enough, applied to the skin has been shown to not be so great as a moisturizer. It's actually been shown to increase the rate of water loss out of the skin. It may have something to do with oleic acid, which actually can disrupt the orientation of the skin lipids, leading to more water loss out of the skin. Um, however, many people do use olive oil here and there as a moisturizer and don't have any issues with it. So as with anything, it's kind of up to you. If you've been using it and not having any problems with it, fine. In my opinion, it's not the best moisturizer. A, because it's been shown to increase transepidermal water loss out of the skin, and B, it's not really occlusive. Because it's an oil, it doesn't really lock in hydration. Some people's skin becomes very easily irritated by oils, especially plant oils like olive oil. And post-shave, your skin is gonna be even more vulnerable to that kind of irritation because you've really just kind of exfoliated it and you're gonna allow for increased penetration of things that might be irritating. When you shave, that's gonna increase transepidermal water loss. So you, you really want a good moisturizer on board. So I guess long story short, no, I would not recommend doing that. But that being said, if you are doing it, and it's not causing you problems, you like it, you find it beneficial, keep doing it. There aren't really hard and fast rules about skincare you can or cannot do this, that, the other. The only thing you can't do is uh, is tan. Don't go tanning, that, that's against the rules. Um, and don't go in a tanning bed. So I guess there are some rules. Anyways, I digress. So olive oil, you know, you'll find it sometimes in skincare, a lot of times in skincare products, sometimes manufacturers will even tout the benefits of olive oil. But truthfully, we don't have that much research on using olive oil as a moisturizer. And the research we do have suggests that it's not that great of a moisturizer. <laughs> All right, and last but not least, this is a question I get a lot and I can't believe I've never addressed it. And that is, I'm using tretinoin, can I get laser hair removal? Now, you can actually, and the only thing is that we typically advise people to stop tretinoin about five days before the laser hair removal because it can make you more prone to uh, side effects from laser hair removal, irritation, potentially discoloration, whether that be hyperpigmentation or hypopigmentation. Because remember, it's kind of smoothing out the top dead layer of the skin a bit. I mean, I'm assuming that you mean you're gonna get laser hair removal on your face. If you're getting laser hair removal elsewhere and you're using retinoid on your face, you don't need to stop it. It's only going to you know, potentially cause issues on the skin where you're getting the laser plus the retinoid. So we do typically tell people to stop it a few days in advance of getting the laser hair removal. Um, however, being on a retinoid like tretinoin, tazerotene, adapalene, altrano, um, you name it, uh, or a retinol or a retinaldehyde, ultimately that may end up making your skin less likely to heal with hyperpigmentation, provided you stop it a few days in advance of the laser hair removal. It can put the brakes on tyrosinase and reduce inflammation in the skin making it so that you're less likely to develop hyperpigmentation after the laser procedure. But always discuss with the laser surgeon or provider that you're gonna have the procedure. They should 
educate you on these things, what to do before and after, you know, pre and post procedure care, that is, you know, really important. So it will vary depending on your skin type, the laser being used, what, what is being treated. I mean, you're asking about laser hair removal, but I'm just saying lasers in general, it will vary. But yeah, I mean, typically we do tell people, please stop the retinoid a few days in advance because of this. You do, do not go tanning. I mean, I already told you that was a rule. You can't tan, but you definitely don't want to tan in the weeks leading up to any kind of laser procedure. All right, you guys, I just polished off my matcha tea. <laughs> Um, that's gonna do it for the Q&A today. Thank you guys for commenting on all of my posts over on Instagram and here on YouTube. It helps my content get shown to more people when you guys do that. And you know, it gives me more things to talk about with you all, seeing what you are wondering about, what I can help you with. So I really appreciate all of your engagement. And don't forget, if you are in the market for good quality teas, definitely check out Peak Tea. Thank you, Peak Tea, for sponsoring today's video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.